All right, um, we're going to get started because about, it's about time. My name is Micho. I'm one of the founding organizers of WordCamp Boston. Thank you very much for coming today. Um, yeah, give yourself a round of applause. Um, and uh, if you're doing the first talk, I'm also uh, going to be here all morning uh, hosting this morning in the session. So I uh, hope to see some of you guys in here throughout the day. All right, I'm going to get started. Oh, well, a couple things I just want to point out. Restrooms on this floor are all the way down the hall to the left. <coughs> Um, and what else do I need to point out? That's about it. So, um, great. I'm glad you guys are here. Can you hear? Or, let's see if we can. James, crank your bubble. Yeah, well, if people want to hear in there, I think that's the, is that any better? Okay. Okay, all right. Sorry about the space. All right, we'll, we'll make do. All right. Um, so, uh, my talk is getting into the loop, um, we'll just get started here. Um, just to give you a little flow of what we're going to be talking about today, uh, I'll go over some loop basics and talk about custom queries. That's really the meat of what I'll be talking about today. And I'll show you two examples. One is rolling your own query, and then another is filtering every query to do this sort of global adjustment. Um, and then give you some tips on how to continue this, uh, you know, how you want to continue your education in this way, because it's a really powerful method that I'll be talking about, and there's really a lot of depth here. I'll really only be skimming the surface. Um, real quick, I'm going to put slides on my blog later. Um, I'll put it on SlideShare, and then also link to it on my blog. Also, I'll have a link to the speaker rate, um, where I, I would love it if I could get some constructive criticism on the talk afterwards. So please check that out. So we'll get started. Um, just a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Micho, um, and I'm a linguist, coder, teacher. I'm right here in Somerville. Um, my day job, as it were, is uh, being a grad student at MIT. Um, but I previously worked for Mozilla. I currently work uh, with Automatic. I'm building the After the Deadline Firefox add-on, which I'll invite you to check out. Um, and uh, PHP, MySQL, that, that sort of LAMP stack is one of the first uh, sort of types of development that I did. Um, and I've had a blog, obviously, on WordPress um, since 2007, which doesn't seem like that long ago. But I've been doing more stuff with it now. Um, and that, that site is Micho.com. I'm also on Twitter. Um, horrendously long, but that's OK. All right, so let, let's, um, and a little bit about me WordPress-wise. Um, I'm the developer of the yet another related posts plugin, also known as Yarp. Um, so that's probably my biggest claim to fame with WordPress. Uh, it's used on Laughing Squid. It's used on Matt's site. Um, over 350,000 downloads. And you can go check it out. Search for Yarp online. So let's get started. So some loop basics. What is the loop, right? Um, well, the loop is the way in which WordPress decides what post it's actually going to show whenever you request a query, you request a URL on WordPress, right? That, that's what's going on in the back. Um, and I'll show you exactly the code that's going on, show you some examples. Um, and on most pages, basically, it, it keeps a stack of different posts that it's going to display, and then the code literally <coughs> loops through it. That's, that's why it's called the loop. Um, and, and we'll take a look at that as well. So here's the simplest loop, which is essentially, I mean, this is the simplest template for a theme you could ever have, essentially, um, where you have a header, you have a footer, right? But in the middle, this is where, you know, we have if have posts, while have posts, the post, you know, the content or whatever uh, template tags you want to throw there. That section here, that's the loop. <laughs> that's what we're talking about today. Um, and the post there, all of these are PHP calls. The post, that's where, that's the one that actually sets up the post, and that's what it really makes all the template tag magic happen. Um, and so this is basically essentially what any theme is it's really stripped down to its components. This is what every theme looks like. Um, just to run through it again, basics, just in pseudocode, if there are posts, right, keep a stack of posts that we want to display. While there are posts, right, get the post at the top, right, do stuff with it. Then, you know, then we get rid of that one. If we still have posts, we'll keep going. And if we still have posts, we keep going, right? And we loop through that until we're done. 
That's what's going on every time it shows an archive page, every time you show your index. That's what's going on. That's the loop. All right. So, um, and as I mentioned, the loop, that section is where <coughs> template tags are valid. Um, and of course, there's a great reference on the codex for template tags. And the post, that, that is the keyword that makes the template tags work. All right. Now, but where do the word the posts come from? Right? Where, where, where do they come from? It's not, it's not from a stork. It's not even through pregnancy. It, it, it comes from a query, right? Every loop has an associated query. And the, the WordPress way this happens is that you request a certain URL, and that based on that URL, WordPress figures out what template file you're going to use. It's also going to figure out what kind of query, the appropriate query for that URL. Um, and so you can learn more about the template hierarchy on that link. Again, all these will be on the slides online, so you can catch those later as well. Um, but here are some examples. Um, you have archive slash one, two, three, right? It'll know to display a single post. So the query is just going to get that specific post. Just going to look for number one, two, three, right? Um, you know, if it's, you're going to archives or something like that, right? It's going to get the last 10 entries from your archive, right? That's going to be the loop. Um, tag slash chicken, all your chicken articles, right? We're going to pull those, we're going to take the top 10 or whatever, right? That's going to be what's in the query. Um, all right, any questions at that point? Quick overview of the loop, all good? All right, yes? Does that include pages too? Yes, pages run through the same, same system, right? Looping through pages um, and individual pages, it's just going to have one entry. You're just going to go through the loop once, but it does use the same mechanism. Yep. Great. Good question. All right. So let's talk about some custom queries. So if you want to customize the loop, there are a couple ways to do it. First is themes, right? You all are familiar with themes, and that can customize how information is presented, how each entry is presented. But if you want to talk control, get fine-grained control of what information is presented, right, you want to be able to hijack and customize the query itself. So that's going to be the meat of what I'm going to talk about today. So just some possible applications just to get you creative, get you thinking. Um, you can create custom feeds with certain kind of information or custom displays with only certain types of posts, certain combinations, specific queries. You can always, you can already get nice, nice archives of, you know, all your chicken articles by the tag or all your whatever articles, but, but if you want to do combinations of different tags and categories, if you want to do only certain kinds of categories and certain kinds of things, right, you can create custom queries and you can hook them up to a specific URL, you can make feeds like that, so those are some possible applications. Um, th this is one plugin called Feed Wrangler, which I use. I highly recommend it, which is particularly for creating custom feeds um, and based on a query that you set up. And it, it's a very nice, very nice plugin. Another example, um, pull information about other posts or pages, other resources, from within the main loop, right? Whenever you're displaying content in an archive, in a single page, you're going through that main loop, and there's always going to be that main WordPress loop. But within that, you can also have a sub loop that is going to be displaying some other posts or something like that. So that's another application. Uh, customize what information is displayed globally, right? That's also another way you can hack the loop uh, to do stuff. And so today, I'm going to show you a couple examples of these two applications. Okay, so all right, let's get started. So rolling your own query. Any questions? Great. All right. All right, let's get started. So here's an example, right? Uh, first example. So this is pulling information about other posts from within the main loop, right? And so just as an example, toy example, um, let's display other posts that we've written about a specific topic, right, using a tag. Um, and I'm going to be, you know, I'm, I'm going to you know, do this the right way, the right WordPress way. I'm going to wrap it up in a short code. Um, and there'll be short code code in here. I'm just going to gloss over that. There's going to be a nice lightning talk 
later this afternoon talking about short codes. So, all right, so a short code, others. Um, and in terms of setting this up, it's quite easy. Um, here's the idea. The idea is uh, we're going to create a new WP query object. If you haven't done object-oriented PHP, we're really not going to be doing much here. Um, it's very basic. So new WP query object, and we're going to give it a request, say, you know, given you know, a variable tag, right, we're going to create a new WP query with the tag being tag. Right? That's the only request. The, the only stipulation we're making in this request is that the tag needs to be chicken, or the tag needs to be WordPress, or whatever tag we're going to be using. Um, and we're going to call this query my query. We have to set it up. We have to name that variable. Um, and then we're going to create a separate loop for my query. Well, that's what we're going to do. All right, pretty straightforward. So let's, and you got to do stuff. In it. Well, yes, we're going to display the title thing. All right, so creating a custom loop looks a lot like the general WordPress loop. It's basically the same structure, right? Where we have half po if have posts, while have posts, get the post, and then we do stuff to it, like displaying the content or displaying the title. Except in this case, we don't want to access the general WordPress loop, WP query. We want to get at this specific subloop that we're instantiating. So, so we have to prefix all of these with WP query, with the WP query object. Uh, with the my query object. All right, so this is the final result that I just put together. Let's step through it real quick. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm setting this up as a short code, right? And I'm going to get the tag attribute from the short code, right? I set up the query. Then if we have posts, while we have posts, right? I'm going to get the post and then get the title. Now all of these I'm putting into a string and returning it. That's just a short code thing. And then I'm wrapping it up in a list item, putting the whole thing in an unordered list. Straightforward, right? Very straightforward, very simple stuff. But it's quite powerful. So I want to show you this right now. Um, that's good. All right. That's speaker rate, by the way. Did this go up? No. It's the oh. light go up. Oh, yes. Question. Let me turn this one off. Well, I can just ask the question. Um, so maybe you'll get to this, but where does that code go? That's a great question. Let me, let me show that to you. Okay. Yeah, great question. So um, I'll just answer that right now. I can show you the code. Um, what I've done is I've packaged that into a plugin. Um, and so this is all the, the way this code is being introduced right now in this demo is through a short code. So I'm using this code here, add short code, that function, to introduce this function. And we'll, I'll show you how that actually gets utilized. But this is in the form of a plugin. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could you could put it in your uh, your template functions. <laughs> that would work as well. So, yes. Can you just uh, explain the difference between putting it in as a string versus echoing sort of repeatedly what you want? Um, so the the issue with uh, putting it in a string versus echoing this is a uh, a short code thing. When it calculates the content, what it goes through is it goes through and runs different filters for different things. And so if I was just echoing it. What would end up happening is instead of replacing it in line where I put the short code, it would just print the things as it was computing them and then put the rest of the body of the content. So that's why I'm re just returning it as a string. So that's just how short codes are set up. So let me show you this demo real quick. I mean, it's very straightforward. It's exactly what you expect. Um, here's my blog. It's just a dump of a local dump of my actual blog. Um, all right, so I'm going to write a blog highlights post. And I'm going to say, right, uh, check out these posts on WordPress. All right, and then I'm going to add my short code, right? Others. And then I got to enter the tag attribute. Tag equals, uh, what do I want to? Let's, let's try WordPress. All right, OK, so I added that there. So let's publish that. Okay, and reload. 
There we go. All right, so check out these posts on WordPress. And we have a nice list of different posts I've written before on WordPress. There you go. Right, a one line, simple short code that really anybody can use. And it wasn't that hard to set up either. Right? I mean, this is really the power of using custom queries, is that you can do things like this very simply. So this is just one example. I'm going to move on to the second method as well. All right. All right, so a um, little bit more about WP Query. Um, you can learn more <laughs> about different attributes you can use on the codex. Um, right now, we just use the tag attributes, but you can also combine different if, attributes, like if you want to get articles that are tagged WordPress and you know in the code category or something like that. You can do different combinations like that. You can display up to five, you can display 50, what, you know, different things. You can set up with different parameters and that's in the query posts article on the codex. Um, and some examples you can see in the loop article in the codex as well. All right, so we'll go on to the next method. So um, another example is to filter every query. So you can use this kind of thing, this kind of method, to customize what information is displayed globally. Um, and right now, just as an example, I'm going to hide all my tweets. Right. So let me show you um, what I'm talking about. So actually, this blog, aside from having blog posts, right, um, right, I use the Twitter Tools plugin, and it's been pulling my tweets as well. Right. Um, but they, you know, they're short articles, maybe I just want to hide them in general, right? I just want to hold on to them, but nobody really needs to see them. So I just want to hide them, or maybe I want to display them s separately, style them differently. Now if we want to style them differently, we can just do that with a theme. We can check what category it's in or something like that. But what if I just want to hide them? Okay, well let's, let's try that by customizing the, customizing the query. So here's the uh, idea, if I can get to it. The idea is um, we're going to use this filter, this request filter. Again, we'll do this through a plugin. Um, but we're going to hook into the request filter, which every time WordPress figures out a new query, when it starts a new query, it goes through the request filter. And I'm just going to modify the request a little bit and add a stipulation that we don't want results from the request category. Right. And I happen to know, because of the syntax, we have to use the category's ID. I happen to know that my tweet category is number 10. All right. So here's the result. Very simple code. Very simple. So we just add a filter on the request hook, a function called request filter. And the function takes a request. It's in the form of an array. We're going to stipulate that the category, so cat, is minus 10, which is the syntax for exclude categories number 10, right? And then we return it. That's all we're doing, right? That, 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 that's, that's all the hand-waving we're doing. All right, great. So let me demo that for you right now. All right, so um, first let's take a look at, first let me show you something uh, here. We can, I'm going to use a trick here to, oh, Okay, um, I'm going to show you that later. Um, let's, <laughs> yeah, I commented out the code, so let me uncomment that. And reload the page. All right, so now um, if we scroll down, all the tweets should be gone. Posts, 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 posts. All the tweets are gone. Right? There you go. Right. Um, and here's just where I'm using some debug code to show the query that we're using. We're just using category is minus 10. Now, the, the power of the filter approach we're using is twofold. So one thing is you could also make it so that tweets aren't displayed using a theme. Right? You can just check if it's in the category and not display them. But then that messes up your pagination. Right? So if you just do that and you have a, you know, if you have a page with, if your first page just has 10 posts and half of them are tweets, 
then you're going to end up getting a first page with five posts, right? And then the next page might have two posts, and then seven posts, or whatever. It's going to mess up your pagination. This way, by adapting the request itself, right, it's just going to do that as part of the request. So you're going to get ten full posts, and then you're going to get ten more, right? It's just going to be weeding out the tweets first. Um, second powerful thing about this is that this also works globally, right? It works on every request. So um, I'm just going to, let me comment that code out again real quick. And let's go to an archive, like August 2009, right? And so now I commented that code out, so it's showing a bunch of tweets, and then there's not even a blog post on here, right? So, so but then here, currently I can show you what the, what the uh, request is. The request right now looks like year 2009, months num, 08, right? That's how it's requesting August 2009 posts. Now let's turn this filter back on. Oh. Okay. Reload it. And so now, now we added the stipulation category as minus 10. It didn't mess with the other parts of the requests. So it's still going to be August 2009 items, but now without the tweets, right? So this is a way that you can modify any request globally. And so it's a much more powerful, and I think a much cleaner way to solve this particular problem. All right. Great. Um, just a little bit about what I just showed you to debug uh, code, in case you're <laughs> interested. I, I find this very helpful for low-level development. I'm, I'm using something called FirePHP, uh, which is a plugin for Firebug, which runs on Firefox. And I call this the Pyro Trinity. Um, so I highly recommend the Pyro Trinity for all your development needs. All right. It, uh, FirePHP is fabulous. It uses HTTP headers that are normally invisible to send those kinds of debug requests. So much cleaner, much safer than using echoes or var dumps or something. So. Highly recommend that. It takes a moment to set up, um, but this is just the code I use. I just, I use a plugin. I just created this plugin, and just during the initialization phase, I just register Fire PHP, and then every time you need to use it, you need to make an object, send, use the log method, but very straightforward. All right. So that's that. Um, let me give you a little bit of uh, additional information to. So you can go away thinking you can, you, know, you can really use this and you have some other resources. Um, of course, take a look at the documentation, right? PHP.net uh, is the great stuff. But uh, the WordPress codex, like a number of links I showed earlier, have great information on how to customize queries, um, how to modify things to your liking. And of course, the source. Um, I highly recommend looking at the WordPress source, especially for low-level development. You know, you want to take a look at a specific filter. You want to see how a query is actually processed. You know, I, I, I just grep it. You know, just hold on to a copy of the source locally, and I just search through everything. You know, search for every instance of a function, or s find out where it's defined. Um, you know, and, and read it. Um, it's very helpful. Um, next step: learn SQL. Right. Um, and this is the language that actually, SQL is actually the language that is used to get the posts and use the queries. All the examples we showed today um, have different request arrays with just some parameters. But what WP Query is actually doing is converting that into an SQL query. And so by learning SQL and becoming more comfortable with it, um, well, first of all, it's really not that scary. Um, it's kind of like English. Um, if you speak that kind of English. Um, but uh, what it lets you do is to write very specific, very powerful filters on the request itself. Um, and this is great if you want to do things that the regular request arrays don't let you do, like incorporate external information. If you have a separate database, if you have a separate table with some other special information you have, you, write, you can join that in into the request. Um, you can do a lot of very cool things with those filters. Very dangerous, but also very powerful uh, filters. So here's an example I blogged about uh, using external orders in WordPress queries. So 
this is something I, I just wrote my experience designing Yark with the related posts plugin. We want to show you know five related posts or something at the bottom of a page, but we also might want to rank them by relevance, right? Um, and we have you know my algorithm comes up with a relevance metric. It's another another table. So what I ended up doing is joining that table using this join filter, and then using that as the ordering source. So that's an example. It just sort of walks through those different kinds of filters. So that's that. Um, we have about five, ten minutes for questions, um, and otherwise I'll be at the Genius Bar this afternoon. So, great. Take a couple questions. Yeah. In uh, your demo plugin, when you excluded Cat 10, that actually would have affected everywhere, including RSS feeds. It would, yes, it would affect RSS feeds as well. One caveat with that demo, which I did not tell you, but I will tell you because I have five minutes, is uh, that uh, all the category archives will get messed up by that. And so, um, so you want to be careful um, because you're using the category, you're specifying a category, um, it might overlap or it might override um, some of those category archives. But you know, when crossing it with posts, regular archives, dates, things like that in RSS as well as in the regular displays, that'll work. So, in the back? Uh, yeah, just, I mean, a way around that would be to hook in later and then set the query bar based on the category coming in so you could then... Oh, well, you can do that with the request filter as well. Right now, I just didn't write the code to yeah, check actually. if it exists already. Um, so, yeah. Yes? What are some uh, best practices for maintaining pagination with custom posts? I've had some issues, like, along the way. Sure. Um, so best practice for that, I, I would recommend, first of all, just like using uh, filters such as request. So trying to do all your customization earlier. If you try to do your customization later, um, either, you know, ultimately in a theme, that's definitely, you definitely don't want to do it in the theme level. Um, if you do it in, at the SQL level, you can still do that, but you have to be careful and watch that you're not modifying the limit clause. But, uh, yeah, um, if you have specific questions, we can talk about it later at the yeah. Genius Bar or something. But yes? So when you say um, you do it at the theme level, are you talking about using CSS to say hide things, or are you saying putting it in um, the template files? Either way. Um, so if, you, if you're if you saying a certain category's class is display none or something, you're using CSS, or in the PHP saying if it's in this category, don't display it. Either way, those are going to affect pagination. Um, because you're just going to be taking ten things, half, you know, six of them might be tweets, and just not displaying them. So you end up with four, and the next page you end up with seven, right? Right. Um, and so the right way to do this is to hook into the query itself. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoy WordCamp Boston. And we have a 15-minute break, and then we'll start up back here again.